Hi everybody, my name is Jean Marie Nevetta and welcome to Something to Talk About Live. Now normally we would have my colleague Liz Owen um, leading us into this conversation. Um, but as we were getting started, we had two things happen. The first one was Liz said, why don't I give you more time for the conversation? And then we started to have a bit of a technical problem. So this is a really, really exciting show, which we are going to try to work at our technical issue um, throughout. So um, we are, today we are actually going to be having a really interesting conversation about um, LGBTQ people um, and acceptance in uh, communities of faith. And we have scheduled to be with us, the Reverend Troy Perry and Pastor Jay Baker. Um, Reverend Troy is having some technical issues, but we wanna get the conversation started. So I'd like to bring in um, my colleague, uh, uh, the Pastor Jay Baker. And there you are, Jay, hey. Hello, hey. Jay, and so for those of you who um, may not be super familiar with Jay, you totally should be. He's the co-founder of Revolution Church. He was also the subject of the documentary, One Punk Under God, which is awesome, and the author of one of actually my favorite books, Fall to Grace, um, A Revolution of God, Self, uh, and Society. Um, and you are also one of our um, first ever uh, Straight for Equality in Faith Communities winners. Yeah. So I am so happy to see you again, Jay. How are you? Well, it's great. I'm doing great. Uh, just trying to survive the the lockdown, the quarantine, and uh, live and yeah. die life doing a lots, lots of these, you know, Excellent. still talking to people. So that's great. And we're always so glad to talk to you. So um, as we hopefully get Troy in the conversation, you and I can just start talking. So the article that we're discussing today, for those of you who are joining us online, um, is available if you go to straightforequality.org and click on something to talk about. It'll give you the questions and um, the actual article link too. So today's article is entitled, Fewer Americans Oppose Religious-Based Refusals of Service. It was written by Chris Johnson in the Washington Blade. And essentially the article is, um, I, as I saw it, some kind of really good news and some kind of not so spectacular news. Um, so Jay, I wanna talk about first the good news because I think everybody needs a little bit of that. And one of the things that um, Chris Johnson wrote about in the article is that lots of polling um, is showing us that by and large, people of faith are in fact becoming more accepting of people who are LGBTQ in their faith communities. And, and this kind of went through a lot of different denominations and a lot of different faith traditions, but largely we are seeing really good numbers. Um, so my question to you is, uh, you know, as an ally doing this work, you're coming to it from a completely different angle um, than some people. Is that what you're seeing? And, and what does the church look like right now for you? Are you seeing this move towards acceptance? What does it look like? Why do you think it's happening? I do see a move towards acceptance. Uh, I honestly, I, you know, I've always seen myself, uh, or at least recently seen myself as kind of a universalist justice worker, you know, for both sides, right and left, you know, as long as it's the, you know, something that we're doing right to include other people. And I think there's just this instinct in people's hearts um, that this is the right thing. You know, I mean, these are people's kids, they're their parents, they're, you know, all sorts of people they know and love. And I think they've just decided like, you know, tradition isn't going to get in the way of me loving my family. And so I've seen it to a point where it, you know, doesn't come up as much as it used to for me. I mean, I did a lot of ally work with Soul Force and, and, and with PFLAG and with different groups like that, Straight for Equality. Um, but now it's something that was, is really accepted. I think, I mean, gay marriage passing 10 years before any of us thought it would yeah. really, really, really had a huge impact. Um, so, so for me, I, I'm, I'm having, I have a lot of great conversations, you know what I mean? I have a lot of LGBTQ people who work with me and, and are, are, you know, I just love that it's just part of our everyday life. Now I can't say that for every church. I mean, our church is a lot more progressive. We meet in a bar and a bowling alley, you know, and, and do stuff like that. Um, but also as a, as an ally, being a straight white male ally, um, I feel like I've had to step back a little bit, you know, to let other people's voices be heard. Um, so there, you know, there's, there's definitely a balance there and, and trying to work that out, but I, man, I, you know, it's, it's a no brainer to me now, you know, and I love it. And, and when I see churches or people like Franklin Graham or things like that, you know, I kind of see them as, um, relics of the past or Jerry Fowle Jr. or things like, you know, and even my own father, who's very conservative, you know, speaks with me a lot about LGBTQ Hello. issues 
and things like that. So we ha we're having good conversations. So it's <laughs> it's some good things are happening. Joy, thank you. Uh, hello, Troy. How are you? I am doing great. Oh, as much as you can be in the middle of this. Uh, can you hear him? Uh, epidemic we're having. <laughs> Uh, well, it is really, really good to see, to, to see you. Um, and for those of you who um, are joining us right now um, and maybe into this, uh, we now have with us um, the Reverend Troy Perry, who is the founder of the Metropolitan Community Church, which is now over 50 years old, um, and author of many publications, although one of the ones with my favorite title in the whole world, which is The Lord is My Shepherd and He Knows I'm Gay, a line I recently said to somebody who was challenging me on something. Um, and he actually presented our Straight for Equality and Faith Communities Award to Jay a few years ago when we um, had our event. And Trey, it is so good to see you. Um, and what we were talking well, thank about, you. Thank you. And what we were talking about, and Jay was just talking about where he has seen more acceptance in faith communities lately. And, and what does that look like? Have you also seen a greater move towards acceptance, um, you know, over what we have seen in the past? And why do you think that's happening? Um, yes, I have seen uh, more acceptance in the faith community. It's been very, very interesting. Uh, one of the churches, very um, uh, conservative in some ways, is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the middle of that, uh, uh, they have gone from a denomination that uh, homosexuality was a sin. At one time, they permitted the police department, uh, the state government did, of uh, from Brigham Young University to make arrests anywhere in the state, especially of gay men. And uh, I've seen that change. I've uh, it's been an amazing story. Uh, not long ago, a president, prophet, uh, seer of their church. Uh, President Nelson uh, was in Florida in Orlando and uh, ended up with a um, uh, invited the owner of the Pulse Bar where the shooting against gays and lesbians took place and uh, talked to her about what had happened. And uh, that church, uh, they're not perfect yet, but they're making changes. And one of the reasons I think they are is because the parents who are involved in the same church. It's very interesting. Um, years ago, I tell people the first meeting I ever had uh, with the president's uh, staff in Washington, D.C. was Jimmy Carter's. And I insisted at that meeting that we take a mother with us to that meeting. And so I got the president of PFLAG from Los Angeles to come in to be a part of that meeting. Because I know parents. Once parents become involved and they love their children, uh, they can change a lot of money. They can. They and can. It's just the way it is. And you know, and it's interesting, um, Trey, as you said that when Jay was speaking just earlier as you were joining into the broadcast, he was actually talking about, you know, as we see these families and parents are, are feeling differently about this, you're not going to discriminate against my child. And I think we're also starting to see how this is happening over generations. The parents are becoming more accepting, the kids are more accepting, and we can only hope that that generation coming after is going to continue that path. So the question I want to ask to both of you now um, is, Actually, you know, a lot of us have seen these things get better. I mean, I've seen it, you've seen it. Um, statistically speaking, people are becoming more accepting. Um, but the article that we were looking at, uh, you know, as sort of a jumping off point for today's conversation, actually had some bad news in it. And it said that while overall people are becoming more accepting, there is less opposition by people of faith to the idea that you should be, you know, you can be allowed to deny someone service because they are LGBTQ identified or because it allegedly conflicts with your religious beliefs. So it goes back to sort of the wedding cake example of, is it justified to say, because of my beliefs, I'm not going to bake a cake for a same sex wedding. And so while we see acceptance going up, in some ways, we are also seeing the number of people who are, you know, okay with those kind of things also increasing a little bit in some cases. So why do you think some of these bad things are happening? And I don't know, uh, Jay, maybe you take it first, and then Troy, you can talk a little bit about it too. Where do we think we're losing some progress? Um, where are you seeing it, and why do you think we're seeing it? Well, first of all, I can't hear Troy at all, so I just want you to know that. So if I don't oh, respond gosh. to Troy, it's because I can't hear him. Okay. Um, 
But you know, I think I, think I couldn't hear Jay. I'm sorry. Information. I think it's happening. Um, I feel like we've got to. I, sometimes I feel like I've said this before. Is I feel like as a, a straight ally, sometimes my voice has been like, "Hey, could you kind of step back a little bit and let us speak?" Um, in some ways, I feel like there might need to be more of us out there having conversations with these folks because I think often. Um, these folks are afraid of LGBTQ people or they're actually just prejudiced. And I think maybe the job of some of us allies is to start going in and having these conversations saying like, we can't exclude our LGBTQ <clears throat> brothers and sisters. This isn't Christ. You know, this isn't any type of art. This is not what our faith represents at all. And, you know, how are you going to feel once again, if your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, you know, can't celebrate their special day. Um, it, 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 it there needs to be laws put in effect that protect people who are LGBTQ from having this happen to them. I, I once said, I'm like, if you want to discriminate against LGBTQ people, close your bakery and turn it into a church. You have your freedom of religion to do what you want, but you should not be running a business I that is open to the anything. public. I, I just don't think anyone should be free to discriminate someone based on color or sexuality or, or even religion, you know? And so I think we have to continue to fight that. And I think maybe as allies, our work is to maybe go, wait a second, I don't, you know, I'm not in this fight, but I believe my brothers and sisters deserve this right. And we maybe need, we need to start s s fighting that and going to our, our governors and, and, and politicians and having important conversations with them as well. So, um, and, and I know we're having some technical issues. Jay and Troy cannot hear each other, so I'm going to try to... <laughs> no, I, I, I'm so sorry. to say hello to okay. Jay, but oh. I couldn't even do that. I can't hear him at all. But he can hear you, so he did hear okay, that. Okay, great. So, um, just sort of to quickly summarize, um, what Jay was talking about was something that's really important to us at PFLAG, which is the role of allies in these conversations, that as... In some cases, we lose progress in terms of acceptance that there really is a place for people who are allies to sometimes have a platform and people are listening to them because they are not members of our community to actually speak. Um, and I think that's a really important piece of this. And, and sometimes allies are intimidated by that or don't feel like it's their role, but it may be time for that. And then to take that past the pews and also potentially talk to our elected leaders too. So Troy, could you talk to me a little bit about um, why do you think we're losing some of the progress that we've made? Because statistically speaking, we are seeing that in some cases, people are becoming a little bit more uh, comfortable with discriminating and using their faith as the reason for it. Why do you think we're losing some of that progress? And, and what do you think we should be doing in that space? I found it very, very interesting that um, as we've won the struggle, as we keep moving forward, as we won pieces of our struggle, we still have to put up uh, with people with uh, what they consider, and I'm, I'm sure they do, have uh, deep religious views. Their churches tell them homosexuality is a sin, and uh, they want to believe that. And the one part, they have lost marriage more and more. Uh, states are changing. Thank God Virginia just changed its laws to permit us to work for a living. And uh, that becomes the the 30, what is it now? The 30th uh, state or 31st mm -hmm. that permits us to do that. And uh, what, what we keep having to push on, I think, is making sure that people understand when it comes to religious beliefs. Now, this is hard in the gay, lesbian, bi, transgender community sometimes, is to say to them, no, churches don't have to perform a wedding if they don't want to. Yeah. I am a gay man. I have people who come to me and ask me to perform weddings, and I say no uh, for different reasons. Sometimes I think they're not ready. And uh, after I've uh, dealt, you know, talked to them, and uh, uh, I just don't feel the right reasons. I don't do shotgun weddings uh, just because somebody, if I was marrying a heterosexual couple, all at once someone's pregnant, and this is where we're going to take care of this because I'm one of those weird people. I was heterosexually married. I have to remind people of this. And... Um, <clears throat> I've often said 
in no way, shape, or form would somebody tell me what I can or can't do in metropolitan community church. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to what happens inside of a church, the church has a right to do what they want to do. I wish they wouldn't. I wish they wouldn't be homophobic, but they have the right to that. Now, when it comes to the Stato and the Constitution, I don't believe for a minute you should have the right and get to pick and choose if you are a business uh, who you go on to cook the uh, wedding cake for. I just don't believe that for a minute. So for me, um, thanking people though, in churches anymore, young people especially, have seen the hypocrisy of what's happened around the gay issue in churches when there are people who speak out against us and then turn around and are much worse than anything we do. Uh, sexual sins and the pulpits of uh, those churches, young people have really view it as like we do hypocrisy. You can't be a hypocrite, no matter what religious group, what religion you are, you can't do that and expect that your membership will continue to follow you. And, you know, and that's a really interesting point, because as we're looking at this data about um, acceptance and in some cases rejection, the other thing that we're seeing is that the number of people who are actually attending services declines. And when people, particularly younger people, are asked, why don't you go anymore? One of the things that tends to, to pop up a lot, particularly when we're looking at in Christian spaces, is the way they speak about and the way they treat certain people. And that goes to people who are LGBT. That, that's correct. And Jay, are you seeing that too? Because I know that your church tends to attract a younger group. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, we see that all the time. I mean, a lot of people just listen online because they can't even go into a church. They don't even feel comfortable going into any building because they're so hurt with, I mean, not just LGBTQ people, but people of different faiths. Um, I mean, because we have people who are atheists who, who attend our church, you know, um, but mostly online because they don't feel comfortable being there. You know, but they still like the community, still like hearing talks with, about Jesus, which I don't understand, but I think it's fantastic. I mean, I have questions too and doubts, so I think we're all in it together. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it, I see a lot of young people leaving the church because it's just not relevant, unfortunately. And, and what we have to do is, is be, continue to meet the community's needs and speak out on behalf of the community as well yeah, so absolutely well that that actually sort of brings me to where i want to bring this conversation with both of you which is we see progress we see loss of progress we see a lot of different messages going on um what should people be doing so if you are a person of faith and you are concerned about making your faith community more inclusive if you want it to welcome everybody if you want to give the experience of community to everybody what should you be doing? And so this is where I am looking for advice from both of you um, so we can talk to the people who are listening today. So what should people do to make their communities more inclusive? And I will take either one of you going first. <clears throat> well, I, I believe this. I believe that if you're a person of faith um, and you're in a faith, whether it's Christian, Muslim, Jew, it doesn't matter. The same thing happens. You go to your imam, your pastor, uh, your rabbi, and you talk to them about your feelings. You say, I have friends who are gay and lesbian, bi and transgender. They're not the horrible people that you're staying from the pulpit. This has to change. Um, the church that I mentioned earlier, uh, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, we used to call them Mormons. Um, that's exactly what happened in their denomination. Uh, the mothers... Uh, the heterosexuals who had children, others who had friends, young people, they went to their elders and they told them, this is not right. This is wrong. We don't treat other people like this. Why are we doing this now? At one time, that church didn't would not permit African Americans to be ordained as, uh, uh, as elders in their denomination. But I'll tell you, since 1976, when the uh, prophet of that church received a revelation that all men uh, who were worthy could receive the priesthood, um, their church really quickly uh, got moved beyond that once it started to our issue. And it just continues. And like I said, it does make a difference. 
to talk to your talk to your community leader. Jay, what do you think? What should people be doing? Well, I, I'm a you know I'm a firm believer in um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s work, and MLK MLK often talked about that people aren't the enemy; misinformation is the enemy. And so, if we remember that, that what we're trying to do is clear up misinformation or theology. I mean, some people's Bibles have the word homosexual in it, which did not, that word did not exist when that book was written and it's a bad translation, but a lot of people don't know that. So something simply is sitting down and having that conversation, but being willing to have tough conversations. And in this day in social media, we see a lot of canceling and, and, and throwing people out. Um, we can't do that because if we want to see people change, if we want to be a part of a movement, we want to uh, continue to have hard conversations. And what I think we've, what's happened to us is we don't know how to have hard conversations anymore. So we end up just shaming our enemies and cutting them out. And that's not productive. That's not going to start a movement. What that's going to do is get people to put their feet in further. Mm -hmm. So I think what we've got to do is figure out how to have these tough conversations. And maybe that happens offline. Maybe it happens online. Maybe it happens in a direct message, but willing to have that and realize change doesn't happen overnight. Everybody is on a different journey and it takes time with them. So patience really is a virtue because it takes patience and lots of love and lots of grace with people to see them change. One time we met with the, when I was working with soul force, we met with the church, um, Bill Hybels church in Chicago and a huge church. And they, they had, a, they were working with Exodus and we met with them and it was an intense conversation. It was really hard, but eventually they told Exodus that they weren't going to work with them anymore. Now, when that happened, Exodus blamed us. Now, I was willing to take the blame. I don't know if it was us or not. I was like, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> but the fact was, is we had the tough conversations. And we, when, when I left, I didn't think like anything happened, but something did happen. You know? And so it's sitting down, hearing one another out. And the Bible talks a lot about loving your enemy. And so that uh, should be a no-brainer as far as theology in the Christian church is that we love those who disagree with us, but we learn to disagree well, have hard conversations. That's why I love philosophy and watching the philosophers. They, they don't like write each other off. They continue to, to argue out their philosophy and they'll write about each other in their books, but they're not like, oh, well, you're done dead to me. They're going, no, but actually, or they'll go like, oh, he was right. And so I think it's really important because, you know, Martin Luther King said the only thing capable of turning an enemy into a friend is love. And I, I firmly believe that that's what we have to do. We have to be the bigger people. We have to take the higher road. And I know a lot of people who've been hurt and aren't ready to do that and go like, why would I want to go in somewhere where they don't recognize my humanity? But what I often push back on is say, well, somebody like the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutherans, who are now affirming, I'm like someone who was LGBTQ stuck around when they weren't welcome and they weren't loved. And what happened was, is they changed the whole thing. You know, it, it became inclusive. And so it's hard work and it's tough work. So I think if you can be in a mentally stable place to do that type of work, it's very important. But having hard conversations, being willing to disagree well and not go straight to war or straight to shaming or cancel culture and continue to do the hard work. That's where it's at for me. And I think and I think that's so important. So what we are hearing is talk to your talk to your religious leaders. Don't be afraid of those conversations and have those conversations and try them in different ways. Try them with love. Recognize this is difficult. And it's something that we talk about all the time. This is a journey. This is not an overnight transformation. No. Few of us are miracle workers, even though we'd like to be. This is about the hard work. Um, also, on behalf of philosophy majors everywhere, thank you, Jay, for saying <laughs> philosophers are good. Um, I want to quickly bring in Liz again, because um, she has said to me that we have lots of comments and questions. Could you help us with that, Liz? Yes, I am happy to help you with that. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can, yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. Troy, I hope you can too. So we're getting a lot of great uh, comments and questions here. Yeah, I it's breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I will I type sort them of can you. hear you. <laughs> sort of can. Okay. That's um, okay. Don't you worry. <laughs> so uh, here we have a question from Jim asking whether acceptance is just another step on the journey to affirmation, which I think is such a great P flaggy question. I believe it is definitely. It's something we talk a, a lot about. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Uh, we talk a lot about going from a place of, you know, just it used to be tolerance 
then tolerance became acceptance. And now we're talking about acceptance and moving from, to, from acceptance to affirmation, and then hopefully maybe affirmation to celebration as a next step in that line. Yeah, I mean, I see folks making baby steps in this all the time. And unfortunately, though, is when I see these baby steps, sometimes I, I these speakers so or, or pastors I and stuff will get hear. invited to a, I, a festival that's mostly inclusive. Yeah. And then they'll get shamed or people will mock them or even I'll protest them. And I just kind of cringe a little bit because I'm like, guys, they're getting closer because I've had conversations with them. You know, put down your sign and go have a conversation with them afterwards because I know they're on the journey. I know they're, they're you know, they're close to being with us. You know, and, and and it's hard. It's so hard to do. I understand, but um, but getting people to speak up, and then when they speak up, celebrate them. I think one of the things I've seen too is that when sometimes when people speak up, they go like, "Well, it's a little too late. Don't you remember you said this and this?" <laughs> That's not how you build a movement. That if you if you if, you know when you get what you want, celebrate it. Celebrate the person and and let them know that you appreciate them being a part of this movement. I think it's greatly important. I mean, getting to the P flag award, I still have that. I have that in my living room. It is a crazy looking award. It doesn't fit in with anything in my house. And everybody's like, what is this crazy big purple thing? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> glad you asked. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it was one of the greatest. I mean, it just was so encouraging to me and for my work. And anytime I think I'm, you know, going through a rough time, I can look across my room and go like, man, you know, there are people who, who appreciated what I did. And I didn't do it for that. Um, but it, man, it, it was such an encouragement to be recognized for that. And I think when we see people coming that way is we continue to encourage them. And I think it's with love and grace and still having the hard conversations. And so we have a lot of people here agreeing with you. I'm going to bring a few of them up. People about the importance of using your voice as an ally, speaking to other potential allies. Um, allyship is important. Ally to ally is a very important conversation. Um, there's a lot of people also here talking about, oh, there's someone here who's sharing about their affirming church, that it's 100% open and affirming, and they wish that that was the way that all churches would be, that no one gets to decide how God creates them, that that is open, and it's not open for debate. Um, it's, it's a really uh, lovely point, and it's nice hearing about open and affirming faith communities. And what's really cool is that we have someone like Troy. I'll, I think I can point to Troy right there. Yeah, yeah you got it. Your Brady yeah. Bunch moment. Who made that happen? I mean, Troy had <laughs> his people die, churches burnt down, I'm sorry, things I like that, hear. and recognizing the past too, because we often forget about the past. And now we have these affirming churches because someone like Troy stood up and spoke. I mean, in 1985, my mom uh, interviewed a gay man with with AIDS, but he was also a pastor from the MCC church. Now, this is when no one was accepting LGBTQ people, and his church opened up the door for that to happen. You know, and here's a gay, openly gay pastor having that conversation. So, you know, I can't ever, ever forget what people like Troy have given yeah. up and sacrificed. So we we can see great churches like the Lutherans, the, the evangel evangelical Lutherans who are now affirming because of his work. Yeah, 1968, Troy performed his first same-sex wedding ceremony. So really out there and really transformed the way people were seeing faith communities. So we've only got a couple of minutes left. I realize, and I'm sorry if we've had all these technical problems of people not being able to hear each other, but it's a it's a it's a constant process, right? Yes. Now. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end end this part with a, a lovely shout out to both uh, to both uh, Reverend Perry and to Pastor Jay about someone who grew up in the Southern Baptist Church for the longest time, believing they couldn't be both Christian and an ally, and that they are grateful to both of you for your courage mm. and to other clergy for paving the way for them to be able to do that. So uh, with that, Jean Marie, I'm going to turn it over to you to end our broadcast today. Um, uh, Reverend Perry, Pastor Jay, I am so honored to have both of you here. Um, thank, you. thank you. I'm sorry for our technical problems. I hope that you'll come back and talk to us again and talk to us even more. Definitely. Um, these conversations really transform um, the way our lives look. Um, in fundamental and real ways that so many of us can talk about and so many of us can talk about as important. So thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, I'm really grateful to both of you. And thank you everybody for joining us tonight. 
uh, today at Something to Talk About. Um, we do this every single week, so please, we hope that you will be back with us next Thursday at 4.30 on the East Coast, 1.30 on the West Coast. Uh, not sure what we're going to be talking about yet, but it will definitely be fun. We want you to be part of the discussion, so make sure you're giving us your comments. And remember, you can do this program at home, too. All you need to do is um, download the conversation guide off the Straight for Equality website at straightforequality.org. Um, as I closed out last week, I'm going to close out again this week with my Doctor Who quote, reminding us to run fast, laugh hard, and most of all, please be kind. My name is Jean Marie Nevada. I'm with Peak Flag National. We are so grateful for you and everything that you are doing. And we hope to see you next week at Something to Talk About Live.